it's interesting to think about uh, the evolution of programming as we come up with these whole new set of algorithms in machine learning and artificial intelligence and what's going to win out. Because it could be a new programming language. Yeah. It could yeah. be, uh, I mean, we, we, I just mentioned Julia. I think there's a lot of ideas behind Julia that uh, Mojo shares. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts about Julia in general? Um, um, so I would I will have to say that when we launched Mojo, the one of the biggest things I didn't predict was the response from the Julia community, mm -hmm. and so um, I was not. I mean, I, I've okay. Let me take a step back. I've known the Julia folks for a really long time. Mm -hmm. They were they were an adopter of LLVM a long time ago. They've been pushing state of the art in a bunch of different ways. Julia is a really cool system. Um, I had always thought of Julia as being mostly a scientific computing focused environment, right? It, and and I thought that was its focus. Um, I neglected to understand that one of their missions is to like help make Python work end to end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I think that was my my error for not understanding that. And so I could have been maybe more sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. But um, but there's major differences between m what Mojo is doing and what Julia is doing. Mm -hmm. So as you say, Julia is not Python, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things that a lot of the Julia people came out and said is like, okay, well if we put a ton of more energy and ton more money or in engineering or whatever into Julia, maybe uh, that would be better than starting Mojo, right? Well, I mean, maybe that's true, but it still wouldn't make Julia into Python. <laughs> so if you work backwards from the goal of let's build something for Python programmers without requiring them to relearn syntax, then Julia just isn't there, right? I mean, that's a different thing, right? And so if you anchor on I love Julia and I want Julia to go further, then you can you can look at it from a different lens. But the lens we were coming at was, hey, everybody is using Python. Python isn't, the syntax isn't broken. Mm -hmm. Let's take what's great about Python and make it even better. And so it was just a different starting point. So I, th I think Julia is a great language. The community is a lovely community. They're doing really cool stuff, but it's just a different, it's slightly different angle. But it does seem that Python is quite sticky. Uh, is there some, uh, philosophical almost thing you could say about why Python by many measures seems to be the most popular programming language in the world. Well, I can tell you things I love about it. Maybe that's one way to answer the question, right? So huge package ecosystem, super lightweight and easy to integrate. It has very low startup time. Right? So, so what startup time? You mean me, like me learning like, curve or what? Yeah, so if you if you look at certain other languages, it, it, you, you, you say like Go, and it just takes a, like Java, for example, it takes a long time to JIT compile all the things. And, and then the, the VM starts up and the garbage collector kicks in and then it revs its engines and then yeah, it can yeah. plow through a lot of internet stuff yeah. or whatever, right? Um, Python is like scripting. Yeah. Like it's, it just goes, right? Um, Python has very low compile time. Mm -hmm. Like, so you're not sitting there waiting. Python integrates into notebooks in a very elegant way that makes exploration super interactive and it's awesome, right? Python is also, um, it's like, almost the glue of computing, because it has such a simple object representation, a lot of things plug into it. That dynamic metaprogramming thing we were talking about also enables really expressive and beautiful APIs, right? So there's lots of reasons that you can look at technical things that Python has done and say like, okay, wow, this is actually a pretty amazing thing. And any one of those you can neglect, people will all just talk about indentation <laughs> and ignore like the fundamental things. But then you also look at, the community side, right? So Python owns machine learning. Machine learning is pretty big. Yeah, and it's growing. And it's growing, right? And it's growing in importance, right? And so- And there's a reputation of prestige to machine learning to where, like if you're a new programmer and you're thinking about like, which programming language do I use? Well, I should probably care about machine learning, therefore let me try Python. And well, it kind and, of builds and builds and builds. And, and even go, go back before that, like my kids learn Python. Right, not because I'm telling them to learn Python, but because- Were they rebelling that, against you or what? Well, no, no, right. Well, they, they also learn Scratch, right? And things right. like this too, but it's because Python is taught everywhere, right? Because it's easy to learn, right? And because it's pervasive, right? And there, there's Back in sense. my day, we learned Java and C++. Yeah, well. well. Uphill both directions, but yes, I yeah. guess Python is the main language of teaching software well, engineering in schools now. Yeah, well, and if you look at, if you look at this, there's these growth cycles, yeah. right? If you look at what, causes things to become popular and then gain in popularity, there's reinforcing feedback loops and things like this. And I think Python has done 
again, the whole community has done a really good job of building those growth loops and help propel the ecosystem. And I think that, again, you look at what you can get done with just a few lines of code. It's amazing.